Hi and welcome. We're going to take a look at Changing Times by Heather Hammond. It's on the Grade 5 syllabus at the moment and this video is made for Michelle. It's a piece of fairly obviously two different sections. The bigger middle section that's fast and the outer sections that are same material much more slowly. Changing times because the time signature is going to change. We start off in 4-4, four, four, there's a bar of 2-4 and then the middle section is in 3-4. So we've got to get our head around all of that. Let's think it through nice and steadily and work out what's going on. The left hand at the start, we have an accompaniment with feeling an A minor thing. It's like a wheel, just keeping the whole momentum going. And it provides a stark contrast with the rhythm complexities that we're about to have. Um, and that idea, when you take a minor chord and move the bass note, is a great idea. It could be the basis for some improv. Um, in any key. Great material for um, noodling on. And then the right hand that Heather Hammond has written over the top starts to involve a little bit of syncopation, that feeling of off the beat stuff that is such a big part of the, um, the central section of this piece. Let's just hear it through. And I'm going to keep a rock steady pulse in my head. I'm going to count aloud, in fact. Counting aloud is really good practice. It's tricky. Perhaps take it in small chunks. Let's try the first two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that obliges me to work out what note fits on the beat, what note is just after the beat. Same bit. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next bit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Count it. Try with your metronome as well. Just get that clicking, take it apart. And then when it comes to putting them together, what marries up with what? No pedal for now. gradually come and make more and more sense. Bar eight, we have an acciaccatura with a line through it, grace note, and I think that will be before the beat, so that the E flat lands with the F. That's kind of thing for that bar there. Which then brings us to our three, four section. And rhythm here is going to be essential to get sorted. I reckon that the rhythm from bar 10 to 10, 11, 12, 13, that four bar rhythm is going to be repeated four times. Bar nine is like an introduction. So let's just look at the rhythm from bar 10. I think it's going to sound like this. Let's take it apart. Let's now play that same rhythm just on a single note. Let's take a C. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. 
Let's try that counting aloud. Three beats in the bar. One, two, three. 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 As a precursor to that, can I feel the pulse? One, two, three. One, two, three. Can I feel the gap between the pulse? One, two, three. One, two, three. So gradually build that up. Then you will see that bar the rhythm, as I said, those four bars, is then repeated many times to create that accompaniment. The melody at the top lets us hear it from bar 10. One, two, three. suggest that you go very very slowly work it out in your head get the metronome out get camp get counting take it apart but there it is together so you can refer back to that little bit if you'd like to I mean it will take time and be patient with yourself get that offbeat feeling two three one two three let's look at the next section now from bar 26 we have a sequence it's going to sound like this one two, three. So the right hand, got to hold on to those lower notes if you can. Well, do hold on to those lower notes. Two, three. Much smoother section this, isn't it? Two, three. I quite like the thumb on the C that thing as opposed to that, my personal thing. Two, three, and I quite like, I think, four and two on that chord instead of what's marked. That should all make, make good sense, I think. Left hand, meanwhile, slightly different notes, but a rhythm that we already know. One, that goes around on a loop. One, two, three. On the beat. Smooth. On it goes. Let's put them both together. More lyrical, this section, I think. One, two, three. hand fingering there because it didn't get me ready for that so yeah we do need three and one there Familiar territory, let me keep going. And I would absolutely get my metronome out to work through that bit. Let me do that for you now. Um, we were doing a pulse of one, two, three. Do, do, do. Keep tapping it says. 110, I don't think so. Ah, we're there. So let's go from the rhythm idea from bar 10. The moment those are equal um, beats, I want, me, I want the metronome to tell me where the first beat of the bar is, so I'm going to set a different pitch there. Okay. One, two, three. Mm. 
with the notes. One. together. And build it up like that. The metronome is definitely our ally here. And the final section we will recognise, let's just think it through, I don't think anything will crop up, back to the original tempo of the first section which is of course is slower. Which reminds me, I've instinctively put the pedal down. I do think that this first section and last section does need the pedal. I would pedal twice per bar to fit in with a change, change. We want legato pedaling, so our pedal is going to come off as we play. So, pen is down, up, down, up, down. The up is synchronised with the note going down. The final section so the E flat is with the F slightly less pedal on that journey down because I do I don't want to create that that mush Actually, actually doing is half pedaling, sort of just getting rid of a bit of the sound, using my ears just to lose a bit. And how much you lift the pedal off there will depend on your piano, the room you're in, and what your ear is telling you. Um, it's a really fun piece. Uh, if you'd like to listen to it all the way through, and a performance all the way through, but slowly, there's a video here. Any questions, do get in touch. Uh, good luck, Michelle, with learning this one. Take care. Bye-bye for now.